All right, a little bonus footage. Oil pressure gauge. Ugh. The connector is buried behind the engine block, but you can reach up, uh, unplug it, and pull it up here where you can get to it. Now it's a three-wire sensor. Wiring car colors look to be uh, some kind of green, black, and orange with a white stripe. So the black, I assume, is a ground, but we're not going to assume. We're going to check. Voltmeter says 18 millivolts. Key is on. Take a test light from battery positive. We find a ground. Should light. Touch it on the pin. That's our ground. That's a good ground. Our voltage only goes up to 50 millivolts. Awesome. Next pin. The green wire. We have 5.0 volts, that's our 5 volt reference. And finally, our signal. We're going to do a bypass test here. There's our signal. And um, what we can do is jump from the 5 volt to the signal and make sure our gauge goes up and the scanner reads, you know, the whatever high oil pressure so I jumped the 5 volt reference to the uh, signal wire and lo and behold there's nothing going on with our oil pressure gauge and we can see what the scanner thinks and just to think we're about to wing an oil pressure sensor at it, right? So escape out of here. Let's do data. Data one. Oil pressure is still at zero. Let's start it up. Okay, there you go. Oh, you see that? We probably set a code. Let's see. Huh, no codes. History. What the heck? What did you see in the data when it the uh, oil pressure jumped up to um, it's showing zero right now. Let's try again. See, so it says 148.9. Let's remove our jumper. See that changes, that will at least ver verify wiring integrity. I don't know why it's not showing what it's supposed to. Let's get that out of the way. Let's see if it does the same thing here. Nah, did the same thing. So we're not done. We have not verified wiring integrity from this uh, signal. Now, for this, we need to pull up a wiring diagram, see where the oil pressure sender signal goes, and make sure it's uh, you know getting to where it's supposed to be, because we can't just throw an oil pressure sen sensor in it and not fix the problem. So doing a little more research on this oil engine oil pressure sensor, on BBB Industries, I have the wiring diagram pulled up for instrumentation. And the sensor is actually connected to the engine control module, the ECM. And then that sends you know, data on class 2 data line to the instrument cluster and controls our gauges. So I think we should go into the ECM with the scanner and monitor this oil pressure sensor signal voltage if it's available on the data PID. And it also supplies the 5 volt reference and the ground, which we already checked, and those are good. So let's go back to the scanner. 
All right, so in the PCM menu, let's uh, first look at trouble codes to see if uh, the computer recognized this uh, failure. And here we go, P0522, engine oil pressure sensor, circuit low voltage, and last test failed. Well, it's unplugged right now. So let's get out of here and look at some data, engine data and see if we can find a voltage reading um, I guess data one, let's try that I am using the, the old moxie dust just for uh, I don't know, old time's sake I guess um, mm -mm. you got map barrel fuel level Torque converter, fuel disabled. No, don't see it there. Let's go to data two. I'm not seeing. Okay, engine oil pressure sensor volts. That's what we're after. Okay, great. So we can, if we can do a custom display here or not, but that's what we're after. So let's do the bypass test again and see if that jumps up to 5 volts. If not, then we're probably dealing with a broken wire somewhere. Okay, I have the 5 volt reference and the signal wire jumped. We can even verify that there is 5 volts on the signal. There it is. Well, our computer is not reading anything at all. It's showing 0 0.02 volts. And the computer lives down here. All right. So, the question is, where is the broken wire? Or is it a broken wire? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just try to look at these engine harnesses. See if there's any rubbing or chafing or anything going on. Don't see anything obvious. Not at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, so I guess the next step would be to either open up the harness in this convenient location or go right to the computer and see if we can get the PCM to respond to like a bypass test. Alright, so I opened up the harness right here. Just cut one little strip of tape and I think this should be our correct wire. It is a tan with a white stripe. Now so I have it just to poke the small hole of the piercing probe and key is on. Our 5 volt reference is still jumped to the signal wire and here on our voltmeter we see 35 millivolts. Um, so that tells me if this is indeed the right wire there's a break between here and there. And how can we uh, make that more definitive? Well, we can jump the 5 volt reference from over there to the uh, tan and white right here and see if our data display changes up on the scanner. So let's do that real quick just to make sure we're on the right wire over here. Alright, so jump through a test light, 5 volt reference to that tan and white. We have 5 volts in the voltmeter and we have 5 volts on our engine oil pressure sensor data pad. Da -da -da. Awesome. So, we just saved ourselves a whole bunch of work. We didn't need to go to the PCM, to the connector, etc. We already bypassed that whole mess by opening up the harness in a convenient location and proving that the problem is between here and there. So now, it's just a matter of 
finding where this wire is broken. We can even tug on it or something. But uh, I'm pretty excited. That means we won't have to get a new oil pressure sending unit, which is kind of pricey. And it wouldn't fix the problem anyways. So let's find the broken wire. Oh man, sometimes I wish I recorded everything, but that's not really feasible. So anyways, I was just looking over this harness for visual damage. And if you remember on an older video, we had a Chevy truck with some TPS or uh, throttle position codes and an um, intake air temp sensor code. And that harness was uh, cut up by someone <laughs> to, uh, probably doing like an intake gasket job or something. But this harness looks very OEM, like no one's ever been here before. Uh, no rodent damage or anything. So I just went to this connector. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do a little tug test. I tugged on it and bam, it just came clean out right out of the connector. You can see the copper is still clean. It's not corroded. There are no green crusties, but it's just probably from heat and vibration. It just popped right out of that connector right there. Now I think that's our problem. We can still verify that that is our problem by touching the 5 volt reference to this wire and making sure it makes it all the way back to the computer just to be 100%. But that seems to be the issue. Okay, so I just have the very tip of that wire pierced since we're going to repair it anyways. 5 volt, you know, jumped through a test light and on our data display again we get 5 volts. Awesome. That proves that there's no harness damage anywhere along here. Everything's good. The problem is right at that connector. We'll get her fixed up. Uh, it might be a tough fix um, extracting that terminal out of there, but we'll do our best. So now to get this terminal out of the connector so we can fix the, uh, the wire, it's a little tricky. You have to like, kind of reverse engineer this little clips. But anyways, um, there are two pieces that come off, the uh, purple silicone ring, that's just the seal, that sits on the inside, you can pop that off. And then there's this plastic gray retainer, it retains the plastic kind of clips that hold the metal terminals in. So to get this first piece off, see there's a little hole right here. And there's three holes on this bottom one and only two holes on the two side ones. So in this very bottom hole, you can insert a very fine pick or a pin in, you know, in, the, in the third hole there in the bottom. Slide that in and then that should release this little bottom tab on here that will enable you to pull off this cap. And then once you pull the cap off, you're basically home free. Then all you need to do, so look back here, we were worried about this bottom terminal with the broken wire. We want to get that out of the connector. And these are held in by little plastic, almost like, uh, you know, sideways clips, I guess. So you lift that up and then you start pushing the metal terminal back. And once that unclips, you should be able to you're using a larger pick to push the metal terminal back you can see it's coming out right here with the with the green thing and that's the, just the weather packing so just you know maintain that uh, direction I guess should be obvious and now we have to get this guy back on this wire and the wire comes in here through the weather pack and it was oh there goes the weather pack it was actually crimped into this female terminal now undoing the crimp that is probably not going to work what I want to do is strip back just a little bit of this insulation put this through the weather pack, lay the copper right on the terminal and then put a drop of solder on it and that will hold for good and then we'll slide this guy back 
right into the connector. All right, let's get this Chevy truck fixed up. First thing, strip back the broken wire, the signal wire. Wouldn't it be a kicker if uh, we get this fixed up and then find out that the sending unit's bad? Nah, that's, that's unlikely. <laughs> so now, so we have this connector with the weather packing. Let's see if we can just thread this wire in right through the weather packing. So the copper, I just want the copper to sit right on the metal part of the connector. And we're just going to touch that with the soldering iron. Can you guys see that? Extreme zoom. There it is. Let's fire up the soldering iron. And then that should slide right into our connector since it won't be really uh, that much thicker than it was before. I think that should work. And we're not really making the wire shorter, so we're not going to stretch, you know, stretch the existing wire too much at all. So let's get our solder ready. There's our solder. This is one laying uh, inside the engine bay. <laughs> and it's already hot enough. See how fast the uh, butane soldering iron heats up. Truth. Like that, yep. Okay, perfect. That's all we need. Set that out of the way. Make sure that guy is tight and it's still hot. And then to put it back in, let's see, which way does it go? So the little tab has to face this part of the connector. You guys can see that. And then uh, I'll just slide her in. All right, here we go. Actually, there's a little bit of solder sticking up, which might interfere. Take care of that. Okay. Better? Coming through. We just need a little bit of uh, help from needle nose pliers. Just slide it home and, until it clicks. It's almost there. A little bit more, but the wire is kind of bending. 
if I should use a pick or what. Oh, it's so close. All right, I think we got it. See, it's all the way, all the way in. Now we slide that little plastic piece on there, just the way it was. Keep everything together. I like that. And then I oh, should have uh, put this little silicone seal on there, but that's stretchy, so that can go right over everything, just like it came off. No problems at all. Awesome. Now, I have to go by feel and feed it back behind this engine block. Take off the Casio watch. Let's see if we can find uh, that oil pressure sending unit. Feel it, and it's gonna find its home. Okay, go on. Yes, it clicked on. Beautiful. Now, the moment of truth, let's see if our oil pressure reading is proper. All right, let's go into our instrument panel cluster, data display. Was it data one or data two? I thought it was data two. Let's get out of here. Escape, data two, and our oil pressure reading. Nope. Are you doing a video? Yeah. <laughs> I am doing a video. What are you doing? Recycling? Recycling your checks? <laughs> All right. Monitor oil pressure, displayed oil pressure. Let's do it. Fire this beast up. Yeah. Ooh, it's alive! Sweet! 42 PSI, that's what it's showing. Let's rev it up a little bit. Yep, it agrees. I like it. Customer complaint fixed. So now all I want to do is let this thing warm up and we take it for a spin and make sure that our water temperature agrees with the scan data and also that the transmission temperature, see trans oil temp, that that agrees with uh, our scan data as well. So as it's interesting, monitored coolant temp is you know 87 and displayed is 104 because you can't display anything less than 160, <laughs> I guess. So we'll let this warm up. Thank you for a spin for final verification of repair. All right, back after our test drive, the truck is fully warmed up. Let's just double check our readings. Start from the top. So we're at 14 volts. That's right on the money. Um, engine speed, 600 RPMs on the money. We can check, bring it up to about 1,000. Right on the money, awesome. Vehicle speed was good, I checked that on the drive. 
monitored and displayed coolant temp so it's 10 degrees difference I guess it just keeps it there until you have a problem so 188 that little mark right there so 160 185 210 and it's right above just a hair above that you know mark about a third of the way up so that is perfect keep going down fuel level 38 percent eh, close enough and then oil pressure 12 psi seems about right and if we raise it up to uh, get to that mark that should be 20 that agrees so it's an actual oil pressure sending unit it's not just 40 or 0 like uh, some Chrysler's do it you know rev it up that's like uh, close to 40 like 35 awesome and then our transmission oil temp is about 150 and that is again right where it needs to be and the whole thing is lit up really nice and bright our prindles good control the brightness here that's it we're done I'm happy customers gonna be happy did all the right steps fix it the right way no parts required really well yeah not really we didn't even need to replace those stepper motors I did anyways uh, a couple light bulbs that's about it didn't need the oil pressure sending unit just a broken wire right at the connector so there you go paste the test and uh, find the right problem so appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time bye bye